I'm going to hand uh, the webinar over to my colleague, Kirsten Tomasaki, to get us started. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Luke. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kirsten Thomas Aki, and I would like to welcome you to the California Integrated Supports Project webinar. This informational webinar will give you some information about this unique and uh, really special project and about next steps about possible recruitment and onboarding um, to engage in this really thoughtful and powerful work. The California Integrated Supports Project is uh, really funded by the California MTSS Initiative um, and through the Department of Education from California and under the guidance of the California, I'm sorry, Orange County Department of Education and Butte County. And we are very fortunate in Placer County to have been awarded this uh, really special and unique grant and with in partnership with Kern County Superintendents of Schools, Santa Clara County Office of Education, West Ed, and the PBIS Coalition. We are really, really fortunate and excited to talk about this unique project with you. Our presenters today are myself, Kirsten Thomas Aki, and I'm the Director of Prevention Supports and Services at the Placer County Office of Education, and I'm going to hand it off to Luke. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Luke Anderson. I'm the Senior Director for Prevention Supports and Services at Placer County Office of Education, and I'm going to hand it to Jess Simpson. Hi, my name is Jess Simpson, I'm the coordinator of positive behavior interventions and support here at the Santa Clara County Office of Education. And I'm gonna hand it to Jamie. Thank you, Jessica. My name is Jamie Parsons and I'm the director for the learning supports unit here at the Orange County Department of Education. Mm -hmm. Next Thank slide. Thank you so much, Erin. Yep, and the next slide, and I'm gonna pass it over to Jamie. Thank you so much. Um, as I mentioned, I work at the Orange County Department of Education and I am on the executive leadership team for the California MTSS project. Um, next slide, please. Many of you may be familiar with the California MTSS framework itself. It was developed in 2017 in partnership with the California Department of Education, Butte County Office of Education, and the University of Kansas Swift Center. This framework includes five domains, including those at the top under the whole child domain and the essential domains and features underneath to support that. The critical component of the California MTSS framework and one uh, that makes it very unique across the country is that it includes uh, three domains here, the inclusive academic, inclusive behavior and inclusive social and emotional and mental health support. Those supports are be, to be delivered within the continuum of support to meet the needs of all students. Next slide. The continuum of support as developed by the Partnership for California MTSS is a rectangle and it, the universal support is placed at the top. We believe that the services are in the tiers, the students are not in the tiers, and the critical component is universal support in the classroom to meet the needs of the whole child. If students need additional support, they receive supplemental or intensified support in addition to the universal support in the areas of academic behavior, social, emotional, and mental health supports. Next slide. We do that through the system of engagement. If you notice the graphic to the right and you start at the bottom, over the course of the last six years, essentially, we have built support at the state level, region level, and county level. We believe that is the source of technical support, and you'll see that mirrored in the California ISP project. And then we have also supported the districts, which we believe are the point of intervention. Districts have to be organized through their leadership policies and practices in order to support the school, which we believe is the place of transformation. And then of course, the purpose of all of our work are the students and families. Next slide. The California MTSS journey began in 2017 through phase one. That was an initial investment of $30 million by the state into the California MTSS framework. At that time, we supported 58 county offices of ed, 600 districts, and over 1,200 schools um, at that time across three cohorts over two years. 
we introduced the California MTSS framework and really dug in at the district and county level to make sure that capacity was built there in order to support the schools. In 2019, we began a four-year project with UCLA to leverage the California MTSS framework to support school climate and conditions. We are continually working with 35 schools on that pilot project, and we're anxious to see the outcomes at the end of this year. In 2022, we began an overlapping project with phase three. That was an additional $50 million investment in the California MTSS framework. At this time in phase three, over the next four years, we will be working with 471 schools and 43 county offices of education. The state trailer bill that came out in May indicated that the need is focused on social emotional learning and mental health. And so that is the thrust of the funding for this, this particular project. We want to make sure that we are building out those supports through the continuum of support, all some and few, what do you have in place at the school site for SEL and mental health? Next slide. So through phase three, California MTSS, over the next four years, we will have three cohorts going through foundational training in California MTSS to build out that framework. And again, you see the number of awards there. We're working with 97 individual schools awards and 81 consortia of up to six partners for a total of 374 schools. The training and support model consists of coaching for all site administrators and a certification course for all school site staff specific to their roles, which results in a certified California MTSS educator badge. Next slide. The phase three California MTSS partnership with California ISP is through the California MTSS funding and the state funding that came to us indicated a partnership with another agency to expand the state's ability and capacity to support LEA's work around social emotional learning, trauma-informed practices, and culturally relevant, affirming, and sustaining practices. And that was to be done through evidence-based practices, coaching, and PD. And our goal specifically, which I have highlighted here, is to build capacity within that continuum of support for SEL and mental health, because we well know that schools have developed often robust systems of support for academics, what are you doing for all, some, and few, and many schools have PBIS in place to support behavior. We want to make sure that we are focusing on and rounding out that continuum uh, with a focus on SEL and mental health. Next slide. So we are proud to partner, California MTSS is proud to partner with the California ISP project with the county offices you see listed below that Kirsten mentioned. Uh, we know that they have the expertise and the depth and the network to, to make this reach and to support the work that we're doing. So with that, I will turn it back over to Kirsten. Thank you so much, Jamie. And as you can see, the California Integrated Supports Project is really using that foundation of the behavioral and instruction features of California PBIS. And now we're really looking at how can we support school sites with social emotional learning, culturally relevant and affirming and sustaining, sustaining practices and trauma informed care. Next slide, please. So when we think about why is this work so important? Next slide, please. We can look at our California dashboard from 2022. And this really does call out some disproportionality with our students of color, our homeless students, and our students with dis disabilities. And this really is a call for action. We do need to create environments that are, that are culturally relevant and affirming for our students. Environments that are safe and predictable, hence leveraging PBIS, and then also how do we support our students of trauma? And with the past pandemic, we do have collective trauma that has embraced us all. Next slide, please. When we look at 40 years of discipline disparity, we can see in 1973 that Black students were suspended two times more than their white peers. And in 2006, three times more than their white peers. And in 2018, 3.8 times. And what we can see is that this isn't getting any better. So we really need to do something. How do we act? And we believe that the California Integrated Supports Project has created a unique pathway using the cascade model to really embrace the need and the call for action for supporting all students. Next slide, please. 
What we also know is that most of our data really does kind of focus on suspension data or dropout data of our high school students. But we need to know that this disproportionality starts young. It starts in our preschools where we can see that 19% of our African-American students contribute to the enrollment of elementary, I mean, of preschools, but 47% of those suspended. So we do really need to look at how are we creating systems and supports for all students and staff to be able to create systemic change. Next slide, please. And I'm going to hand this off to Luke. All right. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you, Jamie, for uh, that background. So you're probably picking up on this idea that this project is connected to two big things that are happening in California. One is California TSS, and the other is the work of the California PBIS Coalition. Uh, next slide, please. One of the things that we are quite proud of in the, the work we've done um, in the PBIS Coalition is prior to the pandemic, we were actively supporting 3,200 schools in California with PBIS. So those schools were, were using our PBIS tools, uh, reporting fidelity data or outcome data. And it, with those schools, those thousands of schools, one of the other questions we often ask is, are they able to implement PBIS well or at fidelity? This is kind of a complex chart and we apologize, but there's three uh, essentially groups of charts here. On the left are the average tiered fidelity inventory or the fidelity scores for tier one of PBIS uh, in California. So year after year, we see more schools reporting fidelity data and we see that the fidelity data is in fact improving. So schools are implementing PBIS better year to year in tier one, in tier two, and tier three. So we have a lot of schools that are implementing PBIS. We have a lot of schools that are implementing PBIS well. And we know from three peer reviewed journals that those schools that are implementing PBIS well tend to see positive outcomes. Uh, next slide, please. The other thing that we know is that the elements of PBIS, data systems and practices uh, are a great backbone for implementing um, MTSS. So within that, we, we use our data. And within this project, we're gonna use our data to disaggregate discipline data. We're also gonna look at data um, beyond office discipline referrals and begin to look at data that uh, will demonstrate how effective our social emotional uh, programming is. We're going to have practices, and these are the things that the students get to experience. So we're going to ensure those practices are culturally relevant and validate for students. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to use our systems because all the best practices in the world uh, aren't going to matter if we don't create systems that support those practices being implemented well. Uh, and so we're going to work quite a bit with the adults in the system to ensure that happens. So by leveraging this work that's happening in PBIS across California, uh, we believe we're providing a really solid uh, backbone to launch this project. Um, next slide. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it back to Kirsten. Thank you so much, Luke. So we've kind of built the background and why are we leveraging PBIS as kind of foundational work and MTSS as foundational work for this project. And so if you go to the next slide, we'll be looking at the key features of the California Integrated Supports Project. So we're really looking for school sites that have California MP MTSS and PBIS implementation that is currently in place, teaming structures that embrace school and community partners, and then providing, and here's a really exciting word, free professional development to school sites and school districts that really are focusing on those culturally relevant, affirming and sustaining practices, social emotional learning, and trauma-informed practices and screening. We also are focusing on family and youth engagement. Um, we want our families to be a partners um, in this journey. And as they understand that they are a part of the decision-making for their youth on those interventions and systems, and then how are we selecting interventions, implementation, and then how are we monitoring progress of said implement uh, interventions. And then really looking at data for equity. How are we grounding our work in data for equity in our decision making and moving forward in the process of the work and the grant? So the theory of action for the California Integrated Supports Project really does embrace the cascade model where our regional executive team and leadership team, this is very similar to what Jamie shared in regards to the MTSS um, 
process that they use. Uh, we're really in working with our regional teams and creating quality professional development um, and looking at evaluation procedures and really collaborating with our advisors. And then that executive leadership team has been working diligently with our regional TA centers through the California PBIS coalition to look at what are the systems that we're going to need to analyze? How are we going to coach these practices? And how are we really going to support districts as we implement this work? And that trickles down to our districts and our school sites. And that's where the boots on the ground work is happening. The work that you're doing is essential, and we are here to support that. And we are that, like looking at teaming structures, um, excuse me, teaming structures, really looking at how we're using data to help build capacity, and then actually really really developing our staff and having them really understand the components of culturally relevant practices and the elements of um, social emotional learning and trauma-informed practices and screening with the ultimate goal of positive outcomes for the youth of California. Next slide, please. So when we look at that, we're looking at the project elements. And so a lot of our grant work is really grounded in the CASEL framework and looking at social emotional learning the culturally relevant practices from the PBIS culturally responsive field guide, and that's the resources for trainers and coaches, and then really looking at SAMHSA's concept of trauma and guidance for a trauma-informed approach. Each one of these competencies that are there um, really help establish um, and are tied to evidence-based practices that you will see in the professional development. And we also highlight throughout the professional development how they really are interconnected and how they are integrated together. We ha can have culturally relevant practices that are embedded within social and emotional learning. And in order to support our students, we need to be culturally relevant by when uh, providing trauma-informed practices also. And throughout the entire process, you see at the bottom that we have quality professional development, coaching and feedback through all three of these elements. Next slide, please. This is a two year commitment for districts and school sites. So in year one, the real focus is on culturally relevant and sustaining practices data for equity and culture for climate. And we're really, um, excuse me, culture and climate. And we're looking at following that cascade model to provide that quality professional development, embedded coaching and systemic support. And I'll say that word again, free. That's very exciting too. Year two, please. Year two is going to focus on social emotional learning, trauma informed screening and um, support by looking at universal tier one supports to inform supplemental and tier two interventions. It will follow the same cascade model and the same um, scope and sequence for professional development, embedded coaching and systemic support. When we look at year one in the scope and sequence, you will see that there are four modules that we will focus on within our district leadership modules. We have site leadership team modules and then site modules. And I will decide, uh, describe those a little more in depth over the next few slides. But I do want to highlight something that's really unique about the California Integrated Supports Project is that this professional development is in person. So really looking at how are we using those strategies and making those connections with adult learners to be able to support the youth of California. Next slide, please. So on the district leadership team, we have four hours of professional development that will focus on district teaming structures, coaching capacities, site team module and overview. So really looking at how districts can support their individual school sites, and then also looking at extended coaching. If you would, your district would like to participate in a little bit more of an extension, it would be looking at the six steps of effective feedback and then coaching logistics. How do you get all that coaching in it and in one time. And next slide, please. And then our site leadership teams. So this is your site MTSS PBIS leadership teams, and they will engage in 15 hours of professional development. And it will be four days and um, it is provided by your regional technical center. And that is the first day really focuses on voice and um, team training. The second one focuses on uh, site leadership and really looking at identity. Well, how is the identity of your system and the identity of your school? And how does it reflect the identity of the community in which you serve? And then we do have three hours of 
the data team and the administration looking at data for equity. How do we disaggregate our data and how do we find those vulnerable decision points to help us make decisions that are good for kids? And then last but not least, the team gets back together, looks at that data for equity and creates action planning where they will select modules for their individual school site based on data to create a very unique learning plan for each site. And each site will participate in six hours of professional development that can be scattered throughout the year at a staff meeting or a PD day before school, after school, um, or however, uh, during PLC time. And they are really focused on evidence-based practices around identity, voice, supportive environment, situational appropriateness, and data from equity. And those are the um, competencies that can be found in the culturally relevant, I mean, culturally responsive field guide. And some of those examples of those opportunities for school sites might be positive savings, greetings at the door, um, personal matrix, some cultural identity work. Um, but the T, the excuse me, the leadership team chooses those unique modules based on data. Thank you so much. Next slide, please. And then when we think about how do we report and what are the reporting requirements, obviously you'll go more in depth with this with your TA center, but just to highlight that districts will be required to complete the LISA and, and then also, or the LEA self-assessment, and then also monitoring and supporting the equity data at individual school sites for grant reporting. And school sites will be required to complete the TFI or the FIA um, and then provide their equity data Data, and then their social emotional data. And I'm going to turn this on over to Jess. Thank you so much, Kirsten. All right. Good morning, everyone. So we finished talking about the why of this work and why this work is so important and needed. And we've looked a little bit at the, the, the what of the work. How are we going to get this done? The how and the what. For the next couple of slides, uh, you can see this is a continuation of the what and the how of the work. We're going to look at the practices of what we're actually going to look at and how we're going to carry it out and support the work at the school sites. Taking a look again here at our scope and sequence, we can see that each level of the cascade model, team members, educators, and leaders receive professional learning on evidence-based practices that are grounded in the core elements. So for year one, those core elements are culturally relevant and sustaining practices, data for equity, and culture and climate. Along with professional development, feedback loops exist to provide coaching, consulting, and support on the implementation of these best practices. Getting to the what of the practices, these, these practices are universal tier one practices that have been reviewed by WestEd using a four-tiered approach based on the Every Student Succeeds Act criterion. Next slide. So this kind of looks at that criterion and, and that that tiered level. For the project, we are using practices and interventions for the first tier, strong evidence. These practices are supported by one or more randomized control experimental studies that are well-designed and implemented. Most of the practices are familiar in some form or fashion to educators and leaders. We are working in this project to scale up these practices by using database decision-making to choose the appropriate application, as well as collecting data to analyze the effectiveness of the practice on student outcome, culture, and climate. Next slide, please. So now we have a full picture of what the practices are and what methodology we're gonna to use to learn and implement these practices. So let's look at how we're gonna support the work of educators and leaders. Next slide. Thinking back to our cascade model of distributive leadership and learning, the coaching model follows that same pattern. At the district level, the MPSS team consisting of district leaders, coaches, coordinators, and the site administrators receive coaching and support that build their capacity, fluency, and efficacy in culturally relevant and sustaining practices using a gradual release model. So the goal is this continuation of work and support of the school site teams after the sunset of the grant work and project. Next slide. The MTSS site leadership teams receive coaching specific to site team modules. They will participate and lead their faculty and staff into building their leadership capacity and creating a continuous learning and improvement cycle within their team that includes the effective use of data systems to implement practices and monitor those practices. Finally, the individual educator receives coaching as a team or individually as contextualized by the district and school site team capacity. So it's gonna look different at each site team for each district. These coaching moves are specific to the site modules 
and coaching experience of both the educator and the coach. The goal is to provide meaningful feedback that will leverage the teacher's existing practices and experience using an asset model to grow their practice and efficacy. Next slide to Jamie. Thank you. So we are focused again on the California MTSS framework. And as Kirsten and Jess pointed out, we are focused in on the domains of inclusive behavior and inclusive SEL and mental health support. We are excited for this work to begin. We know that this is something that we have seen lots of requests for as schools are beginning to work with students' mental health needs and wanting to embed trauma-informed practices, as well as strengthening the work they do around inclusive behavior and SEL. So we, again, we are excited to partner with California ISP and California MTSS executive team stands by to support in any way that is needed. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Kirsten. Thank you so much, Jamie. And so when we think about our next steps in this grant and like how, how you might be able to get more information and what this grant might entail, we're gonna just take a little bit of time to review that. So who, who might be a candidate, and I say uh, for the California Integrated Supports Project. So school districts that have established California MTSS and PBIS teams, schools that have a culture, a culture and climate focus that serves the needs of the whole child, current phase three MTSS grant awardees who have completed the California MTSS pathway certification for schools course with a 90% staff completion, schools that have a 70% TFI tiered inventory completion, and then also possibly schools of differentiated assistance with a California MTSS and PBIS foundations or community schools with a a strong California MTSS or PBIS foundation. That's just a sample of some of them, but as you reach out to your individual regions, they can provide more clarification on that. Next slide, please. And in speaking of our California regions, we are very fortunate to be able to use the California uh, Co PBIS coalition regions to be able to support this work. So what county you lie on will also describe or indicate what region will be supporting you in this work. So for instance, I am in Placer County, and so that would be region three. And these are your PBIS regional leads. So these are the people who will be supporting you in the work. Work. And so if you are in region one, it would be um, uh, Peter Stahl, but if you're in region two, it would be Peter Stahl and Carrie Fulton. And so these are the people who you would be reaching out to, to be able to support you in the work, and they will be also reaching out to you should you um, complete the interest form. The PBIS Coalition, you'll see some, fam some familiar faces here. These are the people who are really help guiding and supporting us in the work and providing feedback. So we're very fortunate to have um, this partnership with them too, and to be able to lean on the technical assistance centers across the state that are part of the PBIS Coalition. And I'd also just like to take a quick moment to thank the California ISP um, planning team. This team has put in countless hours um, to create quality professional development, which we are currently piloting um, in, in different areas across the state of California and receiving um, positive feedback. So I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge them. In addition to acknowledging our um, advisors from across the state who um, have expertise in uh, mental health, uh, PBIS, uh, systems and structures, implementation science, and they have been wonderful resources for us all. And so within your next steps, if you would like more information about the California Integrated Supports Project, you can link to our website. And so we've dropped the link into the chat for you. And on our website is the California ISP interest form. If you have downloaded this PDF, you can also use the QR code um, for either the website or the interest form. And we just need you to fill out that interest form. And over the next couple of weeks, we will be forwarding this information to um, your individual TA centers, and they will be in contact with you shortly. So at this point, we are happy to open it up to um, any uh, questions that you may have. There are some questions in the QA and chat. So um, Luke, would you like to maybe open the QA or are there questions and themes that we would 
like to uh, maybe answer? Uh, yeah, I could, <clears throat> I can uh, call out a couple of themes. I know Lewis has worked on sure. it as well. There certainly are a, a few questions around the professional development. Uh, I know some some questions about where that might take place and at the sure. same person. So, Kristen, maybe you could uh, just address that quickly. Absolutely. So um, typically what we did um, in our pilot is that we had a couple schools within one district that were partaking. So we met at one location and provided the site leadership professional development. However, the six hours of professional learning is a unique pathway. So that is actually, we did it at the actual school site. So we went to the school site and provided that professional development um, during a staff meeting or during a PLC time. And so just dependent that in-person work. Um, if for some reason within a TA center and if it's relatively close, our goal is to make it easy for school, make it simple. That's one of our, our key objectives and to meet the needs of individual school sites. And then Lewis, do you um, have other questions you would call out from the themes? I can grab a couple more as well. You no, know, I think uh, a lot of the questions were around that, the PD. Um, and I see that most of the answers there were were answered, which is really good. Thank you, guys. Um, there is a question from Greg about the scope and sequence. Uh, I believe the scope and sequence is linked um, at our website. And the scope and sequence is published for year one. And year two of the project uh, will focus more deeply on SVL and trauma-informed practices and screening. Um, and that scope and sequence is not yet published. Um, so that's being finalized this spring. I wanted to call that out. Uh, and then there's been a few questions too about um, district participation, uh, what an entire district need to participate or if there were kind of a coalition of willing yeah. schools in the district. So maybe Kirsten, I'll let you. Dive sure, down. absolutely. An entire district would not need to participate. So really when we're looking at um, readiness and as we go through the screening process through the readiness and onboarding um, we really are looking for school sites that have a 70 on the tfi because um, that is a key feature um, we have found that through our pilot to be transparent is that if to schools that didn't have a solid 70 on the tfi when implementing some of the data analysis and looking at vulnerable decision points and neutralizing techniques, which is part of the professional development, um, that was a struggle. So you could have a school site that, um, a couple school sites that are ready to take on the work and we would be more than happy to support small school sites, you know, small chunks. It does not need to be an entire district. Looks like there's a couple of questions too about SEL screeners. Um, one question was, is there a required SEL screener for yes. this project? Um, so it is, oh, I can I, I can jump on that one. <laughs> it is not our goal to make a dictation of um, which screener is better than the other. Um, we already know that we have school districts that are utilizing um, screeners that are beneficial to them. What we will be highlighting in the year two scope and sequence is like, what are the components of a quality screener, um, how screeners can be used, um, how they can be beneficial, and how sometimes they could be harmful. And, you know, really looking at it through the lens of a trauma informed screening and how are our next steps to support our youth. So we would not be dictating um, which screeners would be used just because it's a it's a statewide initiative and there's so many great things that are already happening. We wouldn't want to step on people's toes. And then lastly, it looks like there's some questions too around the readiness. So the, the list of readiness question or excuse me criteria that, that Kirsten went over some of those are either or, so you saw some mention of the tiered fidelity inventory or um, particular uh, spot within the California MTSS. Um, so what I would recommend for folks, if you have questions on eligibility and readiness, whether they be teaming questions or about the specific data, uh, is use that interest form and, and work with your, your regional um, technical assistance providers, uh, and they can kind of help walk you through that and, and also engage in some readiness. So if you're kind of, if you're close, but not quite, uh, that's part of the job of the, the regional technical assistance center to help get you there. So again, and, those, those kind of questions. And look, I think you make a really interesting point if I can piggyback on that around the readiness. So if this is a project that you are like, oh my gosh, this is really something that would be beneficial for um, an individual school or a school site, but we're not quite there. Uh, we have informed our, ready, our TA centers and the fact of like, how do we 
scale up. That's our ultimate goal is how are we scaling up this work to be able to have positive outcomes for youth? And so your TA centers will be working with you to be able to say, this is what we could do over this next year with the possibility of coming on for the second year of the grant, because we do have two opportunities for engaging in this work. One would be this fall, and then one would be the fall after that. So that, that scaling up and that readiness is an important component. Thank you, Luke. We have some questions about the TFI. Um, again, um, you know, we've set that criteria for 70% on the tier one TFI. Um, and if schools have not completed that yet, of course, the, uh, that's something that could still be completed. Um, so just know that as well. Um, again, we're trying to make connections to California MTSS as well. Um, there is not a requirement that uh, a, a school has completed. Um, all of the the phase three work, um, but we certainly do want to prioritize uh, schools that are engaged in that work. Um, it's not required, but something we want to encourage. Uh, so I want to make that connection there. I think we've got most of the questions answered um, as Lewis or Kirsten or Steve. I, I see one this? in regards, I see one in regards to um, observing within the classroom. And so um, we can kind of talk about that. Wendy had asked a question over in regards to that. Um, the way that we're scaling up this work is we are practice, we are we are coaching the individual practice that a school site may have taken on in their unique pathway. So um, we're looking at it through technical changes, changes maybe to a system that is more of coaching the administrator on how that would work. And then also maybe an adaptive might be, we are going to all embrace greetings at the door as a school site. So we would be coaching that practice around that and that um, really the administrator would be coaching that practice with, at their individual school site. And then the um, TA center would be checking in with the district coach if there is one or the administrator. Now, one of the things I do want to stress is that when you look at like teaming structures and needs, we also are very aware that we have a wide span of schools across the state of California and we have very large districts and we have very small districts. And so we want to make sure that we're able to contextualize this to meet the needs of both our large districts and our small districts. So we realize the coaching also can be um, a um, labor group issue. And so that's why we've really tried to be thoughtful about like coaching that practice that we're taking on, not necessarily, you know, coaching that teacher on that. I hope that answers your question, Wendy. All right. I think with that, um, again, we have the um, website linked there and we're going to encourage um, folks to uh, use the interest form and then um, somebody from your region will reach out and, and can answer any other specific questions you may have. Ken, there's uh, just one that we wanted to talk about. There are some questions about funding. So I think we brought want to resonate on that one real quick. Um, so funding is, uh, this is free. So if um, schools are selected to be a part of the work and they're able to do it, it is free professional development at the district site leadership team level and at the site level. And so the, the funding is, is free for you to participate in it. I just wanted to get that one out there real quick and then I'll let you wrap up, Luke. All right. Well, with that, um, again, we've got the links in there. Um, visit the um, the website. Again, we'll, we'll have additional information. We will post this recording and the slides there and we will update our Q&A document as well. Um, with that, um, we're going to sign off and let you get back to your day and thank you all for attending. Thank you.